Welcome to this informative video about the executive branch of the government in India. My name is Kishan Ravdiya you are watching the Inside India Politics channel. India is a federal parliamentary democratic republic, which means that power is divided between the federal government and the states and union territories. In this video, we will dive deep into how the executive branch works and its role in governing the country. The executive branch of the government in India is headed by the President of India. The President is the ceremonial head of state and is elected by an electoral college for a term of five years. The President appoints the Prime Minister, who is the head of government and leads the Council of Ministers. The Prime Minister is responsible for the day-to-day -day administration of the government and for leading the Council of Ministers. The Council of Ministers is the highest executive body in the country and is responsible for making and implementing policies. The Prime Minister is assisted by other ministers who hold portfolios such as finance, defense, and foreign affairs, among others. The President has the power to appoint judges, issue pardons, and appoint governors for the states and union territories. The President also has the power to declare a state of emergency in the country if the security of the nation is threatened. The Prime Minister serves at the pleasure of the President and can be removed by a vote of no confidence in the Lok Sabha, the lower house of parliament. The Prime Minister is responsible for the day-to-day -day administration of the government and for leading the Council of Ministers. The executive branch also includes various departments and agencies that are responsible for implementing specific policies and programs. These agencies work together with the Council of Ministers to ensure that the government's policies are effectively implemented and the country is governed efficiently. Functioning of the executive branch and how it impacts the lives of the citizens of India. The executive branch is responsible for implementing policies and laws that have been passed by the legislative branch. This includes the administration of justice, the maintenance of law and order, and the provision of essential services such as health, education, and infrastructure. The executive branch is also responsible for managing the country's economy and for promoting the welfare of its citizens. This includes the development of infrastructure, the creation of jobs, and the provision of social security and welfare programs. The executive branch also has the responsibility to ensure the provision of essential services such as healthcare. This includes the establishment and management of hospitals and clinics, the training of healthcare workers, and the provision of medical services to the citizens of India. The executive branch also plays a critical role in the development of the education sector in India. This includes the establishment and management of schools and colleges, the training of teachers, and the provision of educational opportunities to the citizens of India. The executive branch also has the responsibility to ensure the protection of the rights and freedoms of the citizens of India. This includes the protection of civil rights and liberties, such as freedom of speech, religion, and assembly, and the protection of economic and social rights, such as the right to work and the right to education. The executive branch works in close collaboration with the legislative branch to ensure that laws and policies are effectively implemented. The legislative branch is responsible for making laws, while the executive branch is responsible for implementing them. The executive branch is also responsible for advising the legislative branch on matters of policy and administration. The executive branch is also responsible for working with the judiciary to ensure that laws and policies are being applied in a fair and impartial manner. The judiciary is responsible for interpreting the law and for resolving disputes, while the executive branch is responsible for enforcing the decisions of the judiciary. The executive branch also has a close relationship with the states and union territories. The federal government is responsible for the administration of the country as a whole, while the states and union territories are responsible for the administration of their own territories. The executive branch works with the states and union territories to ensure the smooth functioning of the government at all levels. The executive branch also has a critical role to play in the international arena. India is a member of numerous international organizations and has diplomatic relations with many countries. The executive branch is responsible for representing India in these organizations and for conducting diplomatic relations with other countries. The executive branch also has the responsibility to ensure the national security of India. This includes the maintenance of the armed forces, the protection of the country from external threats, and the preservation of the integrity and independence of the country. In this segment, we will continue our discussion about the executive branch of the government in India and take a closer look at the key institutions and actors that make up this branch. At the head of the executive branch is the President of India, who is elected by an electoral college for a term of five years. The President is the ceremonial head of state and performs various ceremonial functions, such as the inauguration of parliament, the award of national honors, and the receipt of foreign ambassadors. The President appoints the Prime Minister, who is the head of government and is responsible for leading the Council of Ministers, which is the highest executive body in the country. 
the Prime Minister is the leader of the majority party in the Lok Sabha, the lower house of parliament, and is responsible for the administration of the country. The Council of Ministers is responsible for the administration of the country and is composed of the Prime Minister and other ministers. The ministers are responsible for the administration of specific portfolios, such as finance, defense, home affairs, and foreign affairs. The Indian Civil Service, commonly known as the IAS, is the administrative arm of the government. The IAS provides the administrative support that is necessary for the functioning of the government. The IAS is responsible for the implementation of laws and policies, the management of government finances, and the administration of the country. Finally, the executive branch also includes various other organizations and institutions, such as the intelligence agencies, the police, and the military. These institutions play a critical role in the administration of the country and the maintenance of law and order. Functions and Responsibilities of the Executive Branch of the Government in India As the ceremonial head of state, the President of India has several functions and responsibilities. These include the appointment of the Prime Minister, the appointment of other high-level officials, such as the Chief Justice of India, and the power to grant pardons and clemency in certain cases. The Prime Minister, as the head of government, is responsible for the overall direction and administration of the country. This includes formulating and implementing policies and laws, managing the budget and finances of the government, and ensuring the security and stability of the country. The Prime Minister also chairs the Council of Ministers, which is responsible for the administration of the country. The ministers are responsible for the administration of specific portfolios, such as finance, defense, home affairs, and foreign affairs. They are responsible for ensuring the implementation of policies and laws, managing government finances, and ensuring the stability and security of the country. The Indian Civil Service, commonly known as the IAS, is the administrative arm of the government. The IAS provides the administrative support that is necessary for the functioning of the government. The IAS is responsible for the implementation of laws and policies, the management of government finances, and the administration of the country. Finally, the executive branch also includes various other organizations and institutions, such as the intelligence agencies, the police, and the military. These institutions play a critical role in the administration of the country and in the maintenance of law and order. As the ceremonial head of state, the President of India has several important duties and powers. The President is elected by an electoral college, which consists of elected members of both houses of parliament and the elected members of the legislative assemblies of the states and union territories. The President serves a term of five years and can be re-elected for an additional term. The Prime Minister, as the head of government, is responsible for leading the country and for directing the administration of the government. The Prime Minister is appointed by the President and must be a member of the Lok Sabha, the lower house of parliament. The Prime Minister leads the Council of Ministers, which is responsible for the administration of the country. The Council of Ministers is composed of the Prime Minister and other ministers, who are appointed by the President on the advice of the Prime Minister. The ministers are responsible for specific portfolios, such as finance, defense, home affairs, and foreign affairs. They are responsible for implementing policies and laws, managing government finances, and ensuring the stability and security of the country. The Indian Civil Service, commonly known as the IAS, is the administrative arm of the government. The IAS is responsible for providing administrative support to the government and for implementing policies and laws. The IAS is also responsible for the management of government finances and the administration of the country. The executive branch also includes several other institutions and organizations, such as the intelligence agencies, the police, and the military. These institutions play a crucial role in maintaining law and order, ensuring the stability and security of the country, and supporting the administration of the government. One of the key powers of the President of India is the power to sign bills into law. The President can either sign a bill into law or return it to Parliament for reconsideration. If a bill is returned, Parliament can either amend it or choose to pass it again without any changes. The Prime Minister has several important responsibilities, including leading the Council of Ministers, representing the Government in Parliament, and coordinating with other members of the Executive Branch to implement policies and laws. The Prime Minister also has the power to appoint and remove Ministers, as well as to recommend the dissolution of the Lok Sabha. The Parliament of India is the legislative branch of the government and consists of two houses, the Lok Sabha, or the Lower House, and the Rajya Sabha, or the Upper House. The Parliament is responsible for making laws and controlling the administration of the government. Members of the Parliament are elected by the people and represent their interests in the government. The judicial branch of the government, consisting of the Supreme Court and the High Courts, is responsible for interpreting the laws and the Constitution of India.
the Supreme Court has the power to hear appeals from lower courts and to strike down laws that it finds to be unconstitutional. The high courts have the power to hear cases from the lower courts and to make decisions on legal issues. The judiciary plays a crucial role in maintaining the rule of law and in ensuring that the rights of the people are protected. The judiciary is independent of the executive and legislative branches, and its decisions cannot be interfered with by the other branches of government. In India, power is divided between the federal government and the states and union territories. Each state and union territory has its own government, consisting of a governor appointed by the president, a chief minister elected by the state legislature, and a council of ministers. The state legislature, consisting of the state assembly and the legislative council, is responsible for making laws for the state and for controlling the administration of the government. Members of the state assembly are elected by the people of the state, and they represent their interest in the government. In addition to the state and federal governments, there is also a system of local government in India. The local government, consisting of the panchayats and the municipalities, is responsible for providing services and for making decisions on issues that affect the local communities. Members of the local government are elected by the people of the local areas, and they represent their interest in the government. The Indian bureaucracy, consisting of the civil servants and the administrative staff, plays a crucial role in the implementation of policies and laws. The bureaucracy is responsible for carrying out the policies and laws of the government and for providing services to the people. The bureaucracy is also responsible for maintaining the stability and security of the country. That's a wrap for this video on the executive branch of the government in India. I hope you now have a clear understanding of the structure, function, and responsibilities of this important branch of the government. From the president and prime minister to the bureaucracy and the state and local governments, this is how the government of India operates to serve the needs of its citizens. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative content. Bye love you all and we'll see you in the next video legislative branch of the government in India.